Hello people of YouTube, it's ya boy, Dane Reads. That was weird. And today I'm going to be making a start on, and possibly finishing, who knows, my review of The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols, The Campaign Against Established Knowledge and Why It Matters. So uh, this book was sent to me, where is this beeping coming from? There it is. So this book was sent to me by one of my clients, well, one of my clients basically gave me the money to get this book because they said they really wanted me to read it. They actually want a, one of their upcoming books that I'm going to write for them. Um, they want to do something similar to this. So I thought I'd uh, give it a go. I'm going to start by reading you the blurb, then we're going to go through and check out my tabs. Technology and increasing levels of education expose people to more information than ever before. These gains, however, also fuel a surge in narcissistic and misguided intellectual egalitarianism that derails debates on numerous issues. With only a quick trip through WebMD or Wikipedia, average citizens believe themselves to be as informed as doctors and diplomats. All voices demand to be taken with equal seriousness, and any claim to the contrary is dismissed as elitism. The death of expertise shows how this rejection of experts developed, the openness of the internet, the emergence of a customer satisfaction model in higher education, and the transformation of the news industry into a 24-hour entertainment machine. Paradoxically, greater democratic dissemination of information, rather than producing an educated public, has instead created an army of ill-informed, angry citizens who denounce intellectual achievement. Now updated with a new foreword that explains how all of these related issues came to a head in the wake of Donald Trump's election. Tom Nichols is a professor of national security affairs at the US Naval War College and adjunct professor of the Harvard Extension School and a former aide in the US Senate. And um, it's interesting because obviously it's been updated for the Trump uh, presidency and now I'm reading it in the COVID era. And uh, so he wrote this, this is the end of his introduction here, Tom Nichols, summer 2018 and it's just quite, you know, prescient. We must somehow overcome this narcissistic isolation and the tribalised ignorance it produces. We must master just enough humility and goodwill to start asking each other questions rather than delivering per rather than delivering perorations at each other. Otherwise we call any number of avoidable disasters, after which we will inevitably turn, as we did after World War II, to experts to reconstruct our health, our economy and the global order. The path that only takes us back to a respect for knowledge and ability through some sort of conflagration, however, is too dangerous a risk. In the wake of a global pandemic or a nuclear conflict, there may be no path left at all. I can only hope we recover our senses before then. And as I say, that's 2018. And so I thought this was cool here, right at the introduction, we have a quote by Isaac Asimov. He said, There is a court of ignorance in the United States, and there always has been. The strain of anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. Thought this was a very interesting quote. It said, uh, Just as we are not all equally able to carry a tune or draw a straight line, many people simply cannot recognise the gaps in their own knowledge or understand their own inability to construct a logical argument. And so at the start of uh, chapter one, we have a quote here from a, an, a parody article from The Onion. Washington, D.C. Citing years of frustration over their advice being misunderstood, misrepresented or simply ignored, America's foremost experts in every field collectively tendered their resignation on Monday. I thought this was quite interesting because uh, having read Socrates' defence uh, when he was found guilty of whatever, like, sedition, I think, or, what it, or whatever it was, it was like poisoning the minds of the young. Such observations have not been limited to early America. Teachers, experts and professional knowers have been venting about a lack of deference from their society since Socrates was forced to drink his hemlock. I thought this was funny, funny. he says, uh, Government experts told people to limit their intake of red meat, increase the role of grains in their diet and in general to stay away from anything that tastes good. That last one, I admit, is how I interpreted those recommendations. Years later, it turned out that eggs are not only harmless, they might even be good for you. That's actually incorrect. So, <laughs> the death of expertise. He's not a nutritionist. Now, mind you, neither am I. He says, Americans routinely believe, on average, that more than 25% of the national budget is given away as largesse in the form of foreign aid. In reality, that guess is not only wrong, but wildly wrong. Foreign aid is a small fraction of the budget, less than three quarters of one percent of the total expenditures of the United States of America. He says here, uh, he's talking about the Dunning-Kruger effect, and he says, uh, the Dunning-Kruger effect in sum means that the dumber you are, the more confident you are that you're not actually dumb. It says, uh, as Dunning later explained, we all overestimate ourselves, but the less competent do it more than the rest of us. A whole battery of studies conducted by myself and others have confirmed that people who don't know much about a given set of cognitive, technical or social skills tend to grossly overestimate their prowess and performance, whether it's grammar, emotional intelligence, logical reasoning, firearm care and safety, debating or financial knowledge. College students who hand in exams that will earn them D's and F's tend to think their efforts will be worthy of far higher grades. 
low performing chess players, bridge players and medical students and elderly people applying for a renewed driver's license similarly overestimate their competence by So um, he talks some more about that here he says as it turns out, however, the more specific reason that unskilled or incompetent people overestimate their abilities far more than others is because they lack a key skill called metacognition. This is the ability to know when you're not good at something by stepping back, looking at what you're doing, and then realising that you're doing it wrong. Good singers know when they've hit a sour note. Good directors know when a scene in a play isn't working. Good marketers know when an ad campaign is going to be a flop. Their less competent counterparts, by comparison, have no such ability. They think they're doing a great job. Uh, here we have, again, I think something that's quite interesting in the coronavirus era. A decade later, AIDS was better understood and the hysteria faded. In later years, however, new health risks like Ebola, SARS and other rare afflictions have caused similar irrational reactions. All of them are concerned to innumerate Americans who worry more about an exotic disease than about talking on their mobile phones while driving home after having a few drinks at the local pub. And again, another thing I think is quite prescient when we're talking about the pandemic. Just as individuals facing grief and confusion look for reasons where none may exist, so too will entire societies gravitate towards outlandish theories when collectively subjected to a na when collectively subjected to a terrible national experience. Conspiracy theories and the flawed reasoning behind them, as the Canadian writer Jonathan Kay has noted, become especially seductive in any society that has suffered an epic, collectively felt trauma. In the aftermath, millions of people find themselves casting about for an answer to the ancient question of why bad things happen to good people. This is why conspiracy theories spiked in popularity after World War I, the Russian Revolution, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and their terror attacks of September 2001, among other historical events. I thought this was a great, this was a great little quote as well. Um, Benjamin Franklin, the humorist Alexandra Petty once wrote, was one of the last men up to whom you could go and say, you invented a stove. What do you think we should do about these taxes? And get a coherent answer. And then it talks about Linus Pauling, who weirdly was in um, a video I just watched from uh, Wisecrack as well. And that was about, um, like, the cult of the genius, you know? And I liked this quote too. Um, As the late science fiction writer and professor of biochemistry Isaac Asimov said, the words that have spurred the greatest scientific breakthroughs are probably not Eureka, but gee, that's funny. Uh, overall, I did enjoy it. I gave it probably a four out of five. I think the second half of it sort of slowed down a little bit, um, but it was interesting for me to read based on, um, you know, I'm going to be using it to write this this book with my client as well. So uh, that was pretty cool, and um, I think I enjoyed it more because I knew that I was going to be writing about some of the concepts in it. You know, I think it held my uh, attention a lot better. So I gave it a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I thought of The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.